Hey guys, Car Guru here. Now, don't you hate when this happens? Yes, my wife really, really hated it when it happened to her. Today, I'm gonna to show you all how to replace your own Tesla Model S door handles. It's a very common occurrence for these door handles to fail. And today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to replace it yourselves and save a bunch of money as opposed to bringing it to Tesla. All right, now here are the tools you're gonna to need. You're gonna need a T30, and you're also gonna need a nine or a 10 millimeter depending on the age of the car. The older the car, you'll probably need a nine millimeter. And the newer the car, you'll probably need a 10 millimeter. All right, so you probably have to do this to get into your car now. Because your stupid door handle doesn't work, you gotta get in using this. All right, then you gotta walk around like a common person. All right, first things first, you wanna open this door latch. Now, I've already removed my plastic trim piece. There's usually a trim piece that's right here. You could just pop it off with a sharp object like a knife or a trim removal tool of some sort. But these are the T30s that I'm referring to. Those two have to come out, and also this bolt in the door cup, that has to come out as well. Did I get your loud ass breathing in the shot? <laughs> oh, God, guys, I can't stop breathing. Oh, there that goes. <laughs> oh. Okay, lost that one too. And again, this is the, uh, I have an older car, so this is a nine millimeter. There's also a, uh, a plastic trim piece that goes in here. And again, you wanna get a uh, trim removal tool just to pop that out. Again, sorry my cameraman's breathing so loud, he just had six or seven tacos, and he's having a hard time digesting them, so. <laughs> All right, now this part's gonna save you a lot of time, aggravation, and frustration. What you wanna do is you wanna grip firmly around the speaker grill itself and pop this off. And then you wanna grab right here above the speaker and grab here firmly and pull it off. There you go. All right, so you also wanna start popping these pieces off. This is for the light. And you also wanna get this door sensor out as well. So if you reach back here, this one is for the ambient lighting. That's off. Most of those are out. This one way underneath here. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. It's for the door switches themselves. All right, there we go. And this last one is for the rear light for the door. Oh, damn it. There you go. Oh, come on. I'm gonna be editing this part out. I'll be editing the shit out of that. All right, <laughs> we got that one out. All right, that's what the back of the door panel looks like. All right, now this is a T20. I'm gonna put it in this uh, Porter Cable Harbor Freight drill. Not bad, Harbor Freight. Now, the newer cars, I believe, are T25s. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you put these somewhere where you're gonna lose them. Like the floor, for example. Definitely broke something. Oh, look at this. That explains a lot of the noise I've been getting. This little, uh, this little rubber condom thing for the door is, uh, is falling off. And this happens very often. For the uh, cars I've taken apart so far, this little uh, air shield here has fallen down the door like a tiny little burrito. So most of them has fallen out because what happens is as the car gets hotter, like in the summertime, there's a rubber seal that goes around that. And once that heats up, it gets a little bit more loose and it tends to fall down on the door itself. Now that this is off, you want to get this complete panel down a few inches. Why don't we get this flathead in here just so we can pull that through a little bit more so we get more clearance for this job. There you go. All right, this is a neat little trick that not too many people know about. What you wanna do is you wanna get the window position as high as possible so you can get access to some screws to remove in there. What you wanna do is you wanna trick the window into thinking it's closed, and you do that by getting a flathead right here, and you wanna push this in all the way up now. What we wanna do next is we wanna pop this piece out right here. I have an official trim removal tool instead of a kitchen knife today. 
It's a special day. So you want to get this right back here and you want to get a good grip on it and pull it right through. There you go. Awesome. And in case you were wondering how I did that, you want to get the tool just like this in that position and slowly start shimming it out from the back. All right, this is the door handle harness that we just got out. Let's make sure we click that. That's disconnected now. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to pop these pieces out. I usually get my finger right behind there and push them out. Now these aren't only for NVH, uh, and, you know, noise, vibration, and harshness of the vehicle. So this sensor right here for the airbags is a pressure sensor. And if all of these pieces of tape aren't in here, there's a chance that when there's a side collision, pressure can't build up inside the door. And as a result of that, the airbags on this side of the vehicle may not go off as quickly as the other side. So these are actually pretty important. So now that I have these two pieces off, and uh, sometimes what happens is these get wet and you can't reuse them. One thing you could use to cover up these holes again is gaffer's tape. So we get in here now, you wanna use a 10 millimeter for that. Mr. Cameraman, can you get into that hole? <laughs> There's a sex joke in there somewhere. So I'm gonna go in there kind of blind, but trust us, there is a 10. Can I do it? This is like that game Operation. You ever play Operation if you touch the guys like, uh... Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, no, no, it's not gonna work. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh. That's it. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I thought it was an actual... <laughs> I have a crappy camera, man, but trust me, it can get in there. Look at that operation. Oh. Look at that, not bad. And then the easiest one of them all, right here. Can you get that, cameraman? Mm-hmm. Awesome. What you want to do now is you want to squeeze this door handle in, because this is going to be a nightmare to get out if this handle is, is fully extended. So I'm going to put my hand in on this side, grab this firmly, and push it back in. All right, at this point, now that we close the, uh, the door handle in, I want to reconnect the door. I should have probably did this step first, but oh well. Make sure you watch this entire video first to attempt this. I'm going to say that at the beginning. But you want to connect this back in. This blue connector goes back in the door. Just like this. Now that that's connected again, go ahead and put the window down. Awesome. Now what you want to do is you want to grab this trim piece firmly at the end and grab and pull up slightly as you go down. Grab, pull up slightly, grab and pull up slightly just so you start loosening it a little bit and then just keep doing that and pulling up at the same time. All right, now it's this last nut that we want to get out. I don't know if you can see that or not. But the easiest way to do this is just to put a wrench on it and go back and forth until the entire door piece assembly falls out. A good piece of advice, you could actually wrap your wrench in electrical tape so you don't scratch the window. It's literally taking forever. Whoop. Ta-da! All right, now, now that that's out of the way, Let's plug this back in. So you got the window back all the way up. Okay, now that you can grab the door firmly. Pull this out here. That's the way to do it. All right, now let's get into why this actually failed in the first place. So if you look at these switches right here, those are the two most common failing points of this door handle. And if you look under this wire, there's a lot of corrosion built up on this side. There's a lot of corrosion and there's an actual split in the wire. I'm not sure if you could see that or not, right under here. And on this side, there's definitely internal breakage on that side. Thankfully, this entire harness right here, as you can see, it runs throughout the, uh, the entire door handle. This is replaceable. So I have a replacement harness right here and we're gonna replace that today. Now what we're gonna do now to make our lives a little bit easier is because you'll probably be doing this for the rest of the car's life because there's no updated harnesses, what we wanna to do to get these screws out a little bit easier is um, instead of using that angled tool, what we can do, we could actually push the handle out a little bit 
so this pivots forward. Once it pivots forward, we could drill a hole right here so we'll get access to it easier. We'll do that on both sides. We'll do that on the front and also in the rear for this one that you're looking at right here as well. My hands are now white. There you go. You can see it right now. It's good. You have very nice hands, by the way. You're a hand model? You should be a hand model. Look at those beautiful hands. Oh my God, I'd kill for those hands. <laughs> Just do your job and shut up. <laughs> that was easy. There you go. Nice. How well do you work under pressure? <laughs> Obviously pretty well, I mean, you're still doing it. It's impressive. Again with the S-curve. Nice. Ta-da! Moment of truth here. Now, when I plug this in, it should present because all the other handles are presented. Let's see what happens when I try this. Okay, now we're talking. Now will it open the door? Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> what the? Now I'm gonna do this statically. I fired my cameraman because he was farting way too much. All that Taco Bell. So I'm gonna put this connector in here. He's walking away. You going? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, here comes the moment of truth. I always screw that up. All right, it all presents. Will it open the door? Nice. There we go. So most videos say the installation is the reverse of the removal, but I'll do one better, and you could watch me actually install this. So let's get this back up in here. We're gonna slide it back in like this. And we're gonna pull it all the way up again. And you see that screw? That head right there, you wanna kinda have the hole align on that once you get to the corner. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go, it's back on. Now don't put these on tight because there's an adjustment period we have to go through to make sure that it's lined up on the outside of the door. Okay, that's a little snug, but it has, still has room for adjustment. And now we're gonna get into this hole up here. Okay, that one started now too. The next one is the one that's back here. It's almost like a mystery hole. You don't know what's in there. Where's our lighting guy? Where the hell is he? What's he doing? Where's that hand model? Jeez. All right, now my hand's stuck. Call the fire department. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, now what we're gonna do for this last part is we're going to attempt to adjust this handle. If you look carefully, there's actually more spacing on the top than there is at the bottom. We want that to sit flush and look pretty good. What I could do is I could push back with the vapor barrier and get the door handle out. And once that's out, I could actually manipulate it a little bit here. That's why I was telling you guys not to tighten those screws down just yet. I'm gonna pull this out. I wanna make sure it has even spacing up top and even spacing at the bottom. And once I get that, I could actually start tightening the screws. What I wanna do is I wanna start with the lower screw that's about right here, get that a little bit more snug and make sure the spacing's right. And then I'll start working my way back. So after I got that door handle adjusted, that looks pretty good. 
you want to go on the other side and you want to make sure this connector's in. Plug that in. And then get that connector back to the hole. The trim piece. And this is a pressure fit, so this just push it right in. So you start your way forward. And you push work your way back. Now we work our way around the door. There's still some trim clips that have to be pushed in. You can kind of see those uh, white trim clips in there. Make sure those are pushed in all the way. That's in. Then you just work your way around the door. That's that. It's good. And the bottom section. Okay. And last but not least, and then, okay, that's in there nice and tight. Voila, now the second moment of truth. Is the car gonna explode? Okay, now can I open the door? Look at that. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Please stay tuned for more Tesla how-tos, more comedy, and just general ridiculousness. Thank you everyone. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.